Let me give you an example really quickly, as quickly as I can, of how I'm creating the art for the website and then animating it. So I've got a few things set up here. I was imagining we would, if we were to Google elaborate casket, um, I actually found a good, oh, is that it right there? Yeah. Found a good uh, casket that I thought I could grab. I think this is good because there's no background to it and it's relatively simple, which means it would work pretty well with uh, my plan. So if I uh, click on that, uh, it looks like I'm at this memorial service site. So here's their image. Let me just grab that. And let me show you what I mean. So the first thing I do is take this into uh, Photoshop and unlock the background and then get rid of said background. Oops, cut out a little too much of that there. Here, let me go down here. Uh, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's just a quick demonstration. I'm going to trim the image so it is as small as it can be. That's about what we can do. So nothing else really to do to this image. Uh, previous, uh, well, not previous, but on other images that I've worked for on this project, I've had to break them into a kind of a top and bottom or front and back so I can fit like a body in there in terms of like stacking and stuff. I'm not going to worry about that now, but... That's definitely the hardest part is getting these things to all line up with each other. So let me save this. I'll just save it as a Photoshop document. And thank you, Photoshop. Thank you, Cage Royal Chapel Commission. Sir. So uh, let me take, let's see. Here's the PSD. Let me bring that into Adobe Illustrator. Thank you, Adobe. Thank you, Elon University, for providing me all these Adobe things. Okay, here it is in Illustrator. Uh, Illustrator works with vector-based images instead of pixel-based images, which means, you know, no little dots making things up, basically. Uh, it does it in a different way, or I'll show you a visual difference. This is the photograph, and I'm going to image trace it. So basically, it's going to get vectorized. And I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, there are blotches of color now, whereas previously there weren't. Now I'm going to really simplify this because... I need to export this as code. This image is going to be exported as code. And the simpler it is, the simpler the code is. And by default, the code is not very simple. <laughs> so I am going to do, I put everything all the way to the bottom here. Let me turn on ignore color. It should figure out it's the white. And let's turn preview back on. So I'll bring that into asset export. I don't think that took. So let's try it again. There we go, asset one. So let's call it a coffin. I already have this set up to export uh, with the settings I want as an SVG. So let's put it on the desktop. What do we call it? Coffin. All right. <clears throat> well, let me hide this. And if we go back to a browser, we're about halfway now. <laughs> so uh, there's our first three tabs. Let me close all of those. Okay. So this is a website called SVG OMG. Just to be clear, the stuff I'm doing is as new and up to date as possible. So I got to hop around multiple applications including some that are web-based uh so i'm going to take this coffin that i just exported and bring it in here to uh svg omg and again this is already set up to well to some defaults that are pretty great uh let me try to fix that no, i can't really fix that so i'll just bring it back down again this is a demo so i shouldn't really care i'm just kind of a perfectionist there's a lot of settings here, but basically our file size is going from really big to incredibly small. So this image, is, which is pretty big, is going to be 30K, and it's infinitely resizable. Let me hit download. And more importantly, like I mentioned, it's made up of code, and we just simplified that code. So if I bring this into a code editor, it will show us the image. I've got a plugin that allows us to do that and then show the code underneath. So let's just shrink that down. And, you know, I don't know if you can see this, but here's an SVG. This is written in a language called XML that works with HTML, which is what websites are made of. These are all paths. So it's essentially a series of instructions of where the cursor should make the dot and where it should connect to. That's what I mean by uh, vectors aren't made of pixels. Okay, so what can I do with this? Well, let me copy it. And <clears throat> I would put this into my project. But whenever I'm working with a new uh, image, I try it out first and make sure I can animate it the way I want to by going to this site, CodePen. CodePen's kind of like a coding sandbox, I think you'd call it, where you just try code out, make sure it works, uh, and then put it in your project. My project's already really complicated. You got a billion lines of code, so I will uh, 
pulled off on that. So here's my template that I've made and I have copied the code for that SVG. So I'm gonna hit paste, it should show up. Okay, and so now we can control it with code. So let's go to our style code. Uh, it's called CSS, and I'm going to change the background of this to uh, gray. Let's uh, take this image and say it's max width. There is 80 viewports or so. And then we'll go back up here and say text align center, get it in the middle. It's still pretty close to the top, so we're going to work with that in a second. Let's uh, let's focus on animating it. Uh, so first of all, I got to make sure my plugins are all here. I'm using GreenSock for this whole project. Yeah, we use Draw SVG, and the other one we need is called Scroll Trigger. So these are all fall under the same umbrella of uh, GreenSock or GSAP as they've abbreviated. Uh, I used part of the uh, fellowship grant money to purchase a license uh from green sock uh, in order to do this fancy stuff uh okay so what i want to do like i said is animate it uh i think quickly what we could do is say g set i'm in javascript now g set got set so this is a runtime environment which means it does any interactivity you see in a website that's probably run by uh javascript so svg path i'm going to say fill uh well let's set the fill equal to um, the same thing as the background. Uh, let's see. I think I gotta put uh, some quotes around it. SVG path has a fill, so it's disappeared. <laughs> uh, we could also do this in the style if we wanted. So let's see. SVG path uh, fill nine nine nine. And let's say stroke one, and then uh, oh no, no, I'm sorry, stroke uh, black. Oops. And then stroke width. One. Well, looks like it already is about one. And we can get rid of this. Uh, okay, so now we see the outline of it. Now we see uh, the colors back in. Uh, so these are things that we can try to animate. Uh, I did fill 99. Let me do fill 999. So it actually does what we wanted. Okay, so it's the same color as the background. Let's see how this works. Um, I don't know if we need to set anything. Oh, yeah, let's do. Uh, the G's have set. I'm going to say draw SVG zero. In other words, like remove that whole path as it isn't there because we're going to draw it on. So now we'll say GSAP dot two. By the way, we're almost done. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, SVG path. Oops. And we could squiggle it and say draw SVG. 100%. We should draw it out. Let's just, uh, yeah, it did. It's a little fast. So uh, let's say uh, duration, I don't know, four. Like that. We could also say stagger, and that would do uh, draw the individual paths one after another. I do not think we have the time for that. Let's see if we made the duration as fast as we can. I think we do that a little faster. That's pretty good. I wonder if we can make the duration negative, which doesn't make sense in the real world, but it kind of does in programming. Yeah, I still think it's too complicated of a shape to leave this, so we might have to turn that stagger off. It's cool looking, though. Anyways, let me flip the duration of three. We'll do the whole thing at once. And the next thing we want to do is uh, fade in that color. So let's say gsap.2. Oh, you know, I'm going to say gsap. Uh, how are we going to do this? I think we're going to say from, and then let's see, uh, it's going to be SVG path again, and then squiggle, uh, and I'll say fill, uh, 999, we're going to go up here and turn that off up here, so we're telling it that rule in two places, it's not going to listen when we animate away from it. Well, that's sudden. Let's say duration four. Okay, so you kind of get the idea there. The way we're animating this is by, uh, it animates when we scroll to it, right? So let me go down to dot lister, which is just the name of this little container this thing is in, and tell it that the height of lister is 100 VH or as tall as your monitor. So that's this guy right here. And what I'm gonna do is add another one 
Oops. Div class equals lister. Let's close that division. And I'm going to copy this and put it up top. Can you tell I'm a professor? Here we go. So now we should have three sections in a row. The first one's lister, the second one's lister, and the third one's lister. And what I want to do is tell these animations uh, to animate when we uh, go scroll to them, I guess. So let's say uh, scroll trigger uh, SVG path. Or in other words, like start when we get to you. Um, let's see. I'm going to copy that to these other guys let's into this last step so the animation is uh, just below us when we scroll down it triggers so at that point i would probably um if everything's working i'd save it and then i would copy all this html at about 700 something lines that's that svg all this css for most of it and this JavaScript and it'll be unique. And I bring it into my project, which I'm working on in this app here. And so these are all the different pages. So for instance, if I was working on body donation, I would go to the HTML page and see, this is why I worked in CodePen. This is already 4,600 lines long. And I'd find the place where that stuff goes and I'd drop it in there. And then I'd go to the style sheet and find the appropriate place in here to uh, add the style rules and then finally go to the JavaScript. And anyways, that's my process. So each day I'll come up with whatever it is I'm gonna work on that day. And I try to uh, create the artwork and the animations, put them into the project, fix any problems that arise, and then test everything works like uh, links and stuff like that. Uh, so I hope that was informative and interesting.